The second question I'd like to tackle is what does Fugod understand as the nature of playwriting and is it demonstrated in My Children, My Africa? In 1991, I was working as a film producer and our company had acquired the rights to film his play, The Road to Mecca. One day we were shooting outside the little town of New Bethesda in the Eastern Cape and um, Fugod, who was playing the Dumini in the production, was not involved in the action that day, so he and I sat alongside each other chatting quietly. It was during this conversation that he produced a metaphor which was very striking a metaphor that provides a clear as daylight insight into his understanding of creating the plot of a play. He said to me, Roy, the plots of my plays work like burning fuses. You remember a fuse is that cord you light if you're going to explode a piece of dynamite. You start it burning and it crackles away and the dynamite eventually goes bang. He says, my plays work like burning fuses. To begin with, the few sizzles burning slowly, and then as the flame grows hotter and it's crackling towards its end, the speed increases until kapow, there is an explosion. In terms of the unravelling of the plot of My Children, My Africa, Fugard uses the key dramatic technique of intercharacter conflict. He kicks off the play by writing the debate scene between Zalila High and Camdebu Girls High. The debate presents a non-threatening conflict, but Fugard also uses it to tell us so much about Mr. M, about Tommy and Isabel. There's a jolliness inside Mr. M, yet he has good control of his learners and they clearly respect him. He is an orderly man. The first line of the play is, order, please, from Mr. M, and a little later he bellows, Come to order. If you search through his speeches regarding taking the vote on page 44, that's page 44 of the play, if you search through these speeches as to who wins the debate, you'll get a sense of Mr. M's powerful control of his class. Tommy is a very clever young man, what we call in English quick-witted. He has a sharp mind and conceives of problems with refreshing insights and humour. Examine his delightfully humorous comments regarding the differences between men and women in his closing speech at the debate. He says, Would it be right for a woman to go to war while a man sits at the sewing machine? I do not have milk in my breast to feed a baby while my wife is out digging up roads for the divisional council. That is on page 42, page 42. While Isabel is equally quick-witted and she is struck by the fact that this groundbreaking interface between black at school and white school is offering her a special experience of the potential for interracial harmony. She'll express this later in Act 1, Scene 3, when she says, the visit to Zolile was one of the best things that has happened to me. It feels like it could be the beginning of something. Look for that on page 57. Page 57. Tommy is a young man torn between old loyalties to Mr. M, his school and schooling, and the disturbing demands that are being made upon him by the strangers from the north. He sets this out graphically in the monologue that ends Act 1. Very important speech which you should have very good knowledge of. My friends and colleagues of the production will talk more about the generational clash of the play. I'd like to end by taking the focus of the historical political thrust of the play, turning that off slightly. Let me start by referring you to Act 2, Scene 1 where Fugard writes about words. That's pages 87 to 88. Pages 87 to 88. He's writing about words. Mr. M's warning to Tommy not to scorn words is an important statement to Fugard's own belief that the words of a play can make a difference in our lives, that his plays did contribute to an important way to leading white South Africans to understand, often for the first time, 
what a black person's life under apartheid was like. Do his apartheid plays still have relevance? Well, just absorb what is going on in the United States and around the world presently. Over 200 black African Americans have been killed illegally by police in the past years. The youngest one year old, the oldest 84. And now, today, someone in Canada has also been murdered by the police. Tommy tells Isabel to stop ranting on about the death of Mr. M in Act 2, Scene 4, where he says, Stop, Isabel. You just keep quiet now and listen to me. You're always saying you want to understand us and what it means to be black. Find that on page 99, page 99. You see, understanding each other is a matter of listening and absorbing different points of view. Isabel is a good listener once she's challenged by Tommy, and his explanation that there is no justice for black people in this country other than what we make for ourselves, on page 100, page 100, is absorbed by her. And Fugod develops this acceptance of an unfamiliar set of beliefs by Isabel into that challenging moment in the last minutes of the play. You can find these in Act 2, Scene 5, during Isabel's final monologue, where prayer-like she assures the spirit of Mr. M that she will not waste her life. She will make her life useful in the way that Mr. M's was. And finally, Isabel commits herself to the future of South Africa. The future is still ours, Mr. M. Look at page 103, 103. Fugard's colleague, the great actor and playwright John Carney has spoken of Fugard's talent for making the ordinary special. Carney says he writes about the people on street corners, the simple ones, the no-name ones. I really enjoy this comment of Carney's, especially the remark about street corners. And let me remind you about Mr. M's speech at the end of his first monologue in Act 1, Scene 4, he says, if you see me hurrying along the streets, the people tease me. Pastor Mr. M, they would shout from their front door, you'll be late. Page 63, page 63. Or recall Mr. M describing in Act 2, Scene 2, trying to get to the school through the barricaded streets of the township and how, quote, he ended up at the corner where Mrs. Muckatini sits selling fet cook and prickly pears. The only person there was little Sipo Fondini from Standard 6, writing on the wall, Liberation first, then education. He saw me and called out, Is the spelling right, Mr. M? Page 90. Page 90. Few gods always maintained that one of the secrets and essential weapons of a successful dramatist is just that, having secrets. Shrouding characters in secrets and then with perfectly judged timing, playing out those secrets as the drama moves forward. And there's no doubt he is a master of that technique. Remember the metaphor of the fuse. But secrets in Fugod's theatre work in another way too. The secrets which are being concealed in the hearts of each audience member are confronted by the issues of the plays. And when those issues are acted with delicacy, with warmth of human feeling, and with the at times ironic, at times broad humour of Fugard truthfully observed, then the audience can be deeply moved, moved to a regeneration of ideas, of seeing matters differently, of being better people. Thank you.